Hallelujah. Let's open our mouths in one minute and just bless the name of the Lord. Bless his name, his faithful Father. We honor you. Are you praying? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pray in the Spirit, bless Him. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh, oh, my soul, worship your holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. Lift your hands and you want to bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. like you to open your mouth in one minute and cry out your expectation before the Lord give me an encounter tonight give me a visitation even by your spirit outside make sure you are praying those following online in the name of Jesus Christ father again we have come before you the God of all flesh, we honor you and we thank you for the privilege that you have given us to feast, to learn, to grow, to be built, to be established, to be empowered. Let tonight be no different in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we commend and we commit this meeting tonight into your abled hands. We have come desperate to learn, passionate to receive, determined to be empowered help us holy spirit and as always we vow that jesus in all this will be glorified tonight amen and amen god bless you it's good to be here again give jesus a big big hand clap please be seated hallelujah we'll be discussing a few things tonight usually um every time god grants an opportunity for us to be together i look forward to these moments hallelujah praise the name of the lord so i i usually every time god grants grace um, for us to share together my passion and my commitment is to at least take a day out of that time to be able to help us it is only by the word that we rise and we grow Please pay attention. It is only by the word that we rise and we grow. In this kingdom, if you do not have access to the word of God, there is no possibility for growth. There is no other way earmarked for the believer's growth. Hallelujah. And you see, a church or a ministry, please look up, a church or a ministry cannot grow effectively until certain ingredients are captured this is not my message but since i've started let me as well just just pick it up from there you have to understand that 
a ministry or a church does not just grow because the man of god is a good person or because he's a sincere person no mark chapter 1 please give us mark chapter 1 let's start from verse 21 mark chapter 1 long reading but let's see how we can cut it mark chapter 1 the bible says speaking about jesus now and they went into capernaum and straightway on the sabbath day he entered into the synagogue what did he do he taught he taught so you see teaching the teaching ministry of jesus next verse and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes let's keep reading the bible says and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit notice all the things that are happening here now so we see that he taught in the process of teaching something about the teaching exposed a spirit that was not clean are you getting there now until the teaching of the word came the spirit mingled with everybody pastor shagun is good to see you god bless you hallelujah and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us i know who thou art the holy one of god next verse and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him so this is how to rebuke spirits you don't rebuke spirits by counseling by advices you rebuke spirits by commanding their exodus out of their victim are we together the bible says and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him and they were amazed so two things now we see we see teaching and we see deliverance from the power and the dominion of evil spirits they question among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him be patient i'm showing you something now immediately how long immediately his fame spread abroad that means there is a way god announces what he's doing in a church and a ministry you see the combination of the teaching ministry and the miraculous but in order of priority it was the teaching ministry not just to come around casting demons there was perspective to that miracle the teaching ministry then an unclean spirit immediately the bible says his fame went abroad throughout the region round about galilee but you would think it will stop here continue and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john and simon's wife's mother lay sick of fever and anon they tell him of her and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately her the fever left her and she ministered to him do you know what this is it's one thing to minister the power of god and for visitors and strangers to receive the power of god through your life but it's another thing for those close to you to also experience that grace this was peter's um mother-in-law i think now imagine the the power of that personal testimony so this is not just some fake thing that is done outside somewhere even when he came home his own disciples became benefactors of that grace also and at evening watch this now when the sun did set they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils and the city hallelujah this is it here and the city not the village not the community the whole city was gathered together at the door what did he do with them and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases so we see the teaching of the word captured in his ministry we see deliverance from unclean spirits we see healing of diverse kinds of sickness are we are we together he casted out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him read on please and in the morning rising up a great while before day 
he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed are you seeing the ingredients now the teaching ministry there and then deliverance the healing ministry now we see priesthood captured there the prayer ministry you would think after such exploits there's no need to pray again you would be so carried away by the crowd the bible says while it was morning he got up immediately and went to a solitary place to pray and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed next verse and simon and they that were with him all who are with you will follow you to where you are going if you are going to the place of prayer you don't tell them go and pray you lead them by going there yourself this is an instruction a principle in church growth if you tell people fast and you don't fast they will not follow you they were following jesus as he was going to pray you must be the pace setter of your convictions otherwise people will not follow you is someone learning now and simon please go back to 36 simon and they that were with him followed after him to go and do what he was doing 37 and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee we can stop here so if you want to see growth and increase you're a pastor you have a prayer group the secret is is more than just producing posters there is a place for publicity but the real ingredients that are required is that the gospel must be preached doctrine must be taught or communicated there must be a rich a rich capture of prayer in that ministry are we together and then you must give allowance for signs and wonders human beings will not come and waste their time around a theoretical god and keep going back to their pain going back to their destruction people want to experience god in his fullness they want after your teaching after your preaching they want to see a demonstration and when i talk of demonstration i'm not just talking of falling up and down i'm talking about radical transformation a collision with supernatural solutions that someone can come and sit in an atmosphere like this and get up and doors begin to open lives begin to change you cannot run away from what works therefore if you are not experiencing growth maybe in ministry the problem may not necessarily be the church it may be the vessel the first port of call is the vessel jesus taught jesus preached listen carefully jesus casted out devils look at how he managed fame his fame went abroad and yet he was able to leave that atmosphere of fame and go to pray to build capacity i don't know why god just put this in my heart to say because you see there are many people who think increase is just superstition or just about liking an individual it's more than just liking a good preacher and it's more than being a sincere person you may be a genuine man of god and still suffer as if god did not call you if these ingredients are not captured in your life there is no mystery about church growth if you preach the gospel if you teach the word doctrine being your course content if in the at the point of teaching god still uses you to bring deliverance to the captives healing to the sick and there is a rich prayer life first your own prayer life and then the corporate prayer life of that people believe me that fire will not go down that means every time you see that there is a decline these are the things to examine why should god keep sending more people if they are not being saved there is no justification why god should send people to your church to koinonia or to any other platform if souls are not being saved remember when a fig tree jesus now had a fig tree that attracted him he came there hungry and did not find food what did he do to the fig tree he caused the victory and said fruit should not come out of you again there is no reason why god should bring men to any life 
if the message of the gospel will not be preached and then if believers will not be established in doctrine established in righteousness to become strong to become matured can i tell you this being a baby christian is dangerous especially in these end times just saying i am saved is not enough an heir as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave that means his experience will still be the experience of one who is out of the kingdom hallelujah we must grow and the only way we grow in this kingdom is through the word of god i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified are we learning and then you must trust god for grace please hear me if you're a man of god here whether in ministry already or god is calling you can i tell you among the many things you pray for is the grace for the supernatural you ignore the supernatural get ready for empty pews end time ministry is a ministry of power power that is replicable again and again it is not just the excellency of speech power to bring changes to people's lives power to bring supernatural solutions power to ward off the arsenals of darkness most people have done well in terms of learning scripture but there is a, a gross deficiency of the authentic power of the Holy Ghost in their lives. Nobody will come and sit down and waste their time and waste their destiny before you if there is no demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because can I tell you, for everyone seated here listening to me, there are yokes and burdens you cannot begin to imagine the problems that people shelve away just to pay attention to jesus and if you are advocating and marketing a loving and benevolent jesus somewhere in your sermon somewhere in your church service there must be an opportunity for the holy ghost to reveal the love of jesus to the people while he was teaching there was a man possessed of an unclean spirit and there was something powerful about the doctrine he was communicated it was too hot for those spirits they couldn't keep quiet and jesus casted those spirits out when he did all of that they brought more people for him that is the the reward you get for demonstrating the power of god god honors you with more people but with more people will come a need for greater solutions so he went to pray to increase capacity again hallelujah are we learning so next time anybody asks you what is the key to church growth there is no superstition about it it's not just an issue of location it's not just an issue of geography when there is the preaching of the gospel the teaching of the word a demonstration of the reality of the life and the power of jesus a solid stable ever increasing priesthood ministry of prayer you have found the ingredients that make for growth are we together now philippians chapter 4 verse 9 let's talk on a few things i don't know how many things i'll talk about tonight but wherever we stop we'll just pray by the way tomorrow tomorrow's service is a miracle service i'm sure you are aware of that praise the name of the lord and please i want you as much as god grants grace let everyone know that god is healing god is blessing it starts by five on the dot so that we can work with time and i understand there is a limit to you know the whole transport system so that we work with time but five on the dot we're here and by god's grace we thank god for the beauty of the the screens for greater visual clarity so we'll make sure that everyone is around please five on the dot by god's grace let's start so that we can have some time to pray and then trust god for a very mighty time 
hallelujah it says those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me he says do and the god of peace shall be with you those things which ye have learned now this is powerful there are some things that are learned there are some things that are received there are some things that are hard there are some things that are seen while the word of god is coming like this there are different dimensions and operations of the word some of the things you will learn them because it is secular knowledge you can gain that knowledge but some of them are received as revelation they cannot be taught while the preacher is teaching god is also telling you something out of that message will come a word for you the things that are received and there are things that are heard there are things that are seen it says in whichever way they come the most important thing is do let there be action attached to your knowledge do and it says whilst you do it the god that ensures peace will be with you that means it does not matter what you learn it does not matter what you receive it does not matter what you hear it does not matter what you see if there is no doing the doing of faith the doing of obedience there is no guarantee that you will have a manifestation are we learning now this is very important so you are listening tonight some of you are learning some of you are receiving some of you are hearing some of you are seeing the most important thing is that you obtain grace that you do you walk in keeping with these principles that you are learning you are receiving and he assures you that the god of peace shall be with you the god of peace shall be with you the god of peace shall be with you i have been very concerned about the level of spiritual knowledge of the average believer and i thought to bring this down home also to help us seeing and knowing that you're excelling in this kingdom is primarily predicated on the level of spiritual enlightenment that you have listen carefully the bible says that the god of this world has a principal assignment to blind the minds of people so that they are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet lamented and said my people speaking by the spirit are destroyed for the lack of knowledge not lack of knowledge of what they want but lack of knowledge of what it takes listen carefully most people know what they want but you need to know what it takes to bring forth what you want you want a life of peace you want a life of glory you want a life of beauty you want a life of excellence you want a life of ever increasing manifestation of god's power your needs are not new to you but the bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge knowledge of what knowledge of the requirements what it takes to actualize what you desire and it says because thou has rejected knowledge anything rejected means it was offered you and then for whatever reason you were able to reject it and god will respect your right to choose but there are consequences when you reject knowledge can i tell you this i was talking to the school of ministry students we had a brief session yesterday and i was encouraging them your life will not change just by default your life will not change just because you are a christian in theory it is going to require you having understanding thorough knowledge and understanding of the ways of god thorough knowledge and understanding of the principles of the kingdom then on the strength of the knowledge and the understanding that you have listen carefully you now obtain grace the grace to do the grace to walk in keeping 
very simple in theory so any area of my life that is not working look up please any area of my life where i am not obtaining results the bible mandates that the first thing i do is to go for knowledge don't take action in ignorance you will only recycle pain in your life action in ignorance only recycles pain action in ignorance only recycles pain the first thing you need to do is to camp with god and get high level spiritual illumination john 1 verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not many of you have heard me give this revelation it is powerful how light works look up please a room that has been dark for 10 years a room that has been dark for two weeks a room that has been dark for one hour a room that has been dark for five minutes if you switch on the light in all the rooms they will answer to light the light at the same frequency the room that has been dark for one year will not say no I, I need time because I've been dark for long no that means that even if you have been in darkness for 10 years the moment light comes the result and the dominion power of light is instant very powerful revelation that you have dwelt in darkness for a very long time and then the light of god's word comes in a moment in a twinkling of an eye you can be sure that this reign of darkness has gone forever whether it is in the area of your spiritual work in the area of finances in the area of your influence kingdom service whatever it is that means if people do not make progress with their life their retrogression more than being traceable to demons is traceable to the dominion power of darkness darkness creates stagnation listen carefully darkness creates stagnation darkness grounds a man at the same position and i've told you that time does not change anything time only reveals it takes access to light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 arise shine prophesy to yourself say arise one more time shout it say arise it says arise shine why for your light is come not your light is around it has always been there isn't it amazing that what can lift a man in one moment has always been there but the day it comes to you the day it comes to you that is the day you arise and you shine for the glory of the lord is risen upon you now please listen to me there is no overemphasizing the need for believers to pay attention to spiritual illumination it is the only bailout system out of the darkness of this world look up please many of us come from families where no one has been able to rise beyond a certain level is that true many of us have come from families ravaged by all kinds of demonic things yokes causes all sorts of things some of you are not even aware of the full extent of the evil that surrounds your life and the territory there your immunity is the word of god Now, the challenge with many believers is that the moment they get born again, they just start going to church religiously, just doing church as we know it, religiosity, and then they never pay attention to grow. And for many reasons, I think there are a number of reasons why people don't grow. Number one, they think they are still young. The first reason why people do not contend for passion to grow is because someone else is giving a harvest to a seed you are not sowing. So because you always receive a harvest whether you are sowing or not, it gives you a justification that there is still time. Lamentation chapter 3 and I think it's verse 27. 
he said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth this is my recommendation that you use time for your advantage many people do not contend for spiritual growth or growth in every area of their life because you see once people are growing up the responsibility of parenthood demands that you are there for your child while he's growing financially and otherwise and chances are that just because there's someone giving you money there's someone paying uh, you can you can make all kinds of mistakes and there are people shouldering it for you you may not have been exposed to see the full effect of not understanding or not having high level spiritual illumination can i tell you this is why many young men become utterly frustrated the moment they are left alone because they have been shielded for many years they don't know which result came from their faith and which one came from the covering on them so for many years the gentleman is not fasting he's not praying he's not studying the word of god he's not serious yet he's increasing financially yet doors are opening for him then the day you are now exposed and you have to stand by your own faith you will find out you are still a baby christian you were only leaning on the shoulder of parents i found out that the first reason people do not want to grow in life is because they have been covered and shielded from seeing the effect that lack of growth brings to their lives is god speaking to someone already yes why should i be faithful in keeping financial principles for instance for my increase and my lifting when i have maybe some pocket money coming when i have some money coming from some loved one whether i pray or not is coming so when we are teaching things about favor when we are teaching things about diligence chances are that that message will not really mean anything to you you just say amen when everybody is saying amen but somebody who knew where he came from hallelujah that person will easily receive can i tell you there is a measure of pain that is a blessing because pain sometimes has a way of creating passion don't be too quick to stop pain in people listen to me not just i'm not just talking of demonic oppression there is a pain factor that can wake people up in life the prodigal son it was pain that woke him up the bible says he came to himself not that the holy ghost spoke to him not that the spirit spoke to him pain can make men come to themselves study your bible no i will study one day and then one day the person who becomes your principal breadwinner now says from today i'm not helping you again two weeks of utter frustration by yourself you will look for a forest to pray by yourself you will create all the excuses it is raining it is too hot there is a pain factor that can go and close you somewhere that night without strings without keyboard you will do the praise and worship by yourself you will pray by yourself most people in our generation have been too pampered to become powerful too pampered to become powerful you are lazy spiritually people give excuses say, you know the way these people are the way life you are so busy and we continue to receive all kinds of justification discipline yourself and buy books i won't buy books my daddy said he will buy me books you see that kind of thinking so time is going and the things you should have learned with the gift of time given to you time is passing but the corresponding knowledge is not coming please listen to what i'm teaching you tonight it's a very very powerful teaching it is good for a man that he bear his yoke in his youth when there, and there are people respectfully speaking there are parents who when they are fasting they tell the children don't fast you are too small but demons don't say the children are too small to possess them a little child of five years old can kill ten people before they deliver him and you ask the child who did you kill he will start mentioning he had that level of skill and yet to fast even if he's six to twelve is a problem what of morning devotion or night devotion whichever one devotion that's the most important thing many people you are laughing many people are not serious with god 
don't sit down and expect results from an investment you did not make spiritually no sir god is a just god there are people today the only time they open their bible is when they come to church and now that we have electronic platforms like this some don't even open it at all everything do it for me everything do it for me so a sense of responsibility zero spirituality zero everything zero can i tell you the truth there is a requisite level of investment in knowledge you will need to build capacity for the days that come i have been warning people for a very long time jesus said i will have i will walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh when no man will walk again you don't have the time all the time no for instance for instance when if you are a young man who came from a family where there is a divide as to spirituality by the time you are on campus and you are in school that is an opportunity to build your life because ordinarily at home they may not allow you to pray that prayer now you keep wasting your time you have a social me social social center and all these things hundred level the time is passing god is watching your destiny is also watching 200 level some of your colleagues who may never be allowed to pray do you know there are some of you if you were at home you will never be allowed to go to certain meetings you will not be allowed to carry out certain spiritual exercises god now brought you out of your family using the guise of school so that he can give you five years to build the capacity that your destiny needs but many people continue to waste their time and I tell you, the spirit of the waster is alive, especially in this, our arrogant generation. Time is going. Now you are in 400 level, for instance. The only thing you know is what they taught you in class. Relationship zero. You have not, you have not had friends. You've not made friends, godly friends that can become a ladder for your destiny. And the Holy Spirit keeps warning you. People invite you for strategic programs you don't care because in your mind I have an uncle in NMPC or an uncle in a shell he promised me that as soon as I finish I will get a job and then just when you are writing your final year he will relocate to Canada woe to him that puts his strength in a man Please pay attention. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you again. There are some of you, God disguised. He brought you to Zaria to come and stay maybe with a family to walk or to learn certain things. And you may be wondering, God, but why didn't you take me to Lagos and other places? God is saying, you are only here for three years. Use that three years well. This three years is the answer to the prayer that you've prayed. In one prayer and fasting and said, Lord, I want to have a great destiny. In these three years maximize the time there are people who encountered god in their spillover year it was in that frustration they were strolling around like madmen around their various campuses and the holy ghost landed upon them and they now said lord thank you that i have a few more weeks to stretch it out in destiny everybody say knowledge can i tell you my first assignment for you tonight is can you list the five people who are currently wasting your time and wasting your destiny right now i'm not saying write it list it in your mind five things the five top things that are wasting your time and wasting your destiny and not allowing you to access the kind of knowledge that you need for some of us it may be movies and media and social media for some of us it may be friends for some of us it may be laziness and carelessness oh i don't have money one day god led you to a fellowship where they shared free books five keys to building your faith you looked at the person who wrote it and said look at this guy there's nothing faith on him and you drop the book instead of you to open up your spirit and learn somebody who has four over ten you who has zero who is better 
so when i tell you this our generation is arrogant i know what i'm saying people who have no results but they are the ones who sit down vetting the performance of those who are at least doing something someone who is trying and praying for one hour you whose prayer life is under attack what gives you the credence to talk about that person's prayer life koinonia is quiet useless friends that waste your time don't allow you to spend time with god why should you feel sorry for saying sorry i cannot see you now i'm spending some time with god in prayer or i'm meditating or i'm just resting can i tell you this you must love your future more than your reputation if you love your reputation more than your future you are not going to get there i assure you it is better to be controversial and advanced than to sit down to try to please everybody and stagnate yourself forever. How about your passion for God? I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever, it's yours. I looked at the photo of a man that I used to know many years ago. I was, you know, just browsing the internet and he had become an old man today. Tears came out of my eyes, I said, Time is really passing on. I looked at my own picture. <laughs> not, <laughs> not another pe My own picture, Joshua Selman. I couldn't have believed I've grown this much. Go and look at your picture. And then you will never tell yourself I'm young again. You will give yourself the pressure if it is knowledge you need to get. If it's one week fasting, you need to fast. Better do it now. It will not kill you. Father, I need knowledge. High level spiritual illumination. I came from a family where no one has risen. I came from a family where the only scripture we know is John 3.16. I'm ready to upgrade myself. That my destiny is calling me. And this will be a period. God is. Some of you are in a spiritual probation period right now. I don't know if he was here or in Abuja I was teaching. Listen. Okay, I think it was a four square meeting or so. If you have two people, listen to me. Let's assume one person is 30 years or 40 years. And another gentleman is maybe 19 years or 20 years. The guy who is 20 years can afford to make all kinds of mistakes and do whatever he wants to do with his life. He can correct his, he can listen to a powerful sermon when he's 25. And adjust he's still in his morning stage you who is 35 or 40 is that is not even the afternoon is is the later part of afternoon are we together you cannot afford to be pursuing life at the same pace with that person please wake up I'm speaking to you by the spirit the greatest unbecoming of our generation is this fallacy of I am young pray I am young fast i am young go for the word i am young when he spoke to jeremiah jeremiah said i am but a child jeremiah 1 verse 5 he says say not that i am a child conquer that demon of trying to excuse all kinds of things saying there is time is someone learning now I've told you in my world an adult is not 18 years in my world an adult is anybody who has the intuitiveness to understand what I'm saying and has the stamina to be able to bear the consequence of action once you are that person you are an adult whether you believe it or not that's why when we give gifts to children here I tell you the age age 1 to 10 
everybody say knowledge you have to identify the time and destiny wasters in your life otherwise you are not going anywhere my precious people please listen to me i'm preaching to you from the depth of my heart if you cannot identify the people and the things that waste your time and waste your destiny there is no advancement for you time wasters do not be afraid of being controversial let them call you mother mary let them call you you are whatever no problem this thing called future everybody will get there it's like it's like in a class nobody writes exam for another person except you are doing malpractice and if they catch you on your way out so while you are preparing for the exam of your destiny don't let someone act as if he's going to write the exam for you by the time you have three four five children and you cannot feed them by the time your spiritual life goes down by the time demons attack your family and you don't have the spiritual stamina to bring deliverance to them nobody will come and do it for you you need to begin to build that stamina now young lady look at me are you building the stamina for your destiny or you are building hair makeup Th those things are not wrong don't get me wrong but if that's all you are building you're about to waste your destiny gentleman are you building apps and it and all of those things or you are settling down to build capacity a day will come your stamina will be tested no matter who you are listen to what i'm telling you for as long as you are alive on earth you can't pray it away a day will come your stamina will be tested your spiritual stamina your financial stamina your mental stamina it will be on the strength of the knowledge that you have that's what will give you stability i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this for desperate people do desperate things and we press in there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this everybody say knowledge my people are destroyed in Luke chapter 19 41 and 42 one of the major reasons Jesus cried and wept over a city why did he weep over it his lamentation was based on verse 42 he said if thou hast known at least in this thy day the things which belong to your peace the things which belong to your spiritual excellence the things which belong to your financial advancement he says but now they are hid from your eyes can i tell you something about the deception of knowledge just because you are around an information does not mean you are receiving it many people were around jesus i've taught you this here you can choose what to do when you are around the truth others can make money from the truth judas others can run away from the truth but others can allow themselves to be transformed by the truth the choice is yours to know what to do with the truth knowledge i remain a student in the school of knowledge i like to know what i do not know because i don't have i don't have the time i'm telling you if you are not conscious of the fact that time is going in your life you will not grow today in the name of public figure or the name of whatever it is i've almost lost a, a very major sense of my my personal life and privacy all in the name of supposed public figure if you see me stand by the junction to peacefully buy corn now you will lay me and kneel down there and say apostle i've been trying to see you see that but there was a time i could go alone without disturbance whatever i did with that time is what will speak now young lady remember once upon a time you didn't have children now you have two or three children you can't pray for five minutes they don't care they will bang your door and say open that door 
as you are praying they will tear the bible they will smash your phone motherhood has come in god warned you and said use this opportunity now and build capacity for some of you let me speak to you prophetically you are like elijah wake up and eat the journey is far wake up and eat eat on behalf of your family wake up and eat eat on behalf of your destiny man of god in the making hear me i'm speaking to you by the spirit wake up and eat if you wake up in the night you will not die wake up and eat the journey is far you will go in the strength of what you have eaten elijah did not know how far he was going to go he ate a little and went back to sleep the angel tapped him for his own good he said wake up eat again some of you may need to go back to your old notes faith 101 start learning it again just because it's foundational does not mean it is mediocre you need to revisit those things again do you know uh, please if you can listen to my message maximizing personal retreats it's a very powerful message don't wait until there is a corporate time of spiritual emphasis for your spiritual emphasis there are times you can take a day or two days or a week all you are doing is revisiting your old notes those were the things God told you before you became emoji those were the principles that you learned how faith works principles of prayer how to withstand every wiles of the enemy how to engage the word of god some of you even today you don't even speak the word of god again because it's for children and it has become to your detriment i am blessed i'm increasing i'm prosperous you love and that is kindergarten christianity go back and begin to deal with these things again is god speaking to us can i tell you the average believer if you have been around this ministry or around this city for at least five years you have no excuse for ignorance because by the privilege of god's grace there has been a level a high level of spiritual illumination do you know and i'm saying this sincerely most people listen to the messages that i used to teach years ago in koinonia and they send me text messages and they say this is what has changed my life and sometimes i nod my head i say oh dear this is what i taught my precious people six years ago seven years ago some people listen to it they just dumped it away but someone is now finding it and is becoming gold do you know why refer to what i said earlier pain can wake you and make something you trivialize become serious when god is teaching you about finance the the economic system of the kingdom you can throw it away and say it doesn't matter all i need to do is to learn how to pray and fast and finances will magically come into my life the day you suffer in a way that looks like god does not exist like the prodigal son you come to yourself you will go back and fish out any book where god has spoken to you up and you sit down and learn you can see your elder siblings and insult them and say their lives are not moving forward shame on them until the day what appeared to them appears to you i said now that you have reached 35 i'm here to introduce myself that i'm the one who scattered your father I'm the one who destroyed everybody in your family. And now that happy birthday first. And then he will now let you know. That's when you will now go back and go and listen to the mystery of exemption. The teaching the mystery of deliverance. I don't know how many years ago that message was preached here. Till today, till tomorrow. That teaching continues to liberate nations what many people trivialized doesn't matter until you sleep one day and you almost cannot wake up again because something presses the living daylight out of you and makes sure you will not wake up that day you now wake up and say ah so there is something called oppression some of you may never know the advantage of favor when we teach about favor you laugh because all your roommates are from koinonia and you think that's how it will be then the first job they give you you are the only christian serious christian in the midst of wolves you say in jesus name they say let that not come out of your mouth again and then you say okay 
now you will understand the scripture that says when a man's ways pleases the lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him can i tell you sincerely there are many people who do not benefit from certain teachings because there is a level of innocence they have not been exposed to the reality of life so you will not understand some of the things that god said in scripture here but I'm praying for you that you don't have to wait until darkness comes upon you. Do not make the mistake of the five foolish virgins. They were all virgins. But the mistake of the five foolish ones was they did not carry extra oil. When the bridegroom delayed, their oil finished. There were people who would buy it. They had money to buy it. They did not buy it. He said, go to them that sell and buy now god is giving you a chance you have not gotten to any dark days where you will need this now please don't feel bad there are people who would never have believed that their loved ones would go to be with the lord at this time nobody prays for anybody to die nobody prays for anyone to go but there are families who it was a shock all of a sudden daddy gone mommy gone now they are exposed alone it is the residue of what you know and you have that will preserve you in the days that come. I went around Graceland today just briefly just to see what happened. And I just, as I stood there and I just looked at everything that happened, I just said, my God, I pray that the people who were victims of this, do they have sufficient illumination to be able to bail them? time and chance happened to them all but it is what you know that preserves you don't wait until the day that a doctor says it looks like there's something pain that you thought it was just a spray they say it looks like something is growing there let's test first and then they say something you don't like that's the day you go and start learning on healing and health that's too late you don't learn when there is trouble no you archive you build a, a solid spiritual fortification is God speaking to you today yes. there are people who never paid attention to spiritual things when we were teaching about fruitfulness all wise during miracle service we are preaching and prophesying and saying jesus name be fruitful lay your hands on your womb say i will never be bad you see me just laughing and laughing at others they don't know it's a demonic spirit it's a waster 10 years down the line you find out that because god gave you an opportunity to receive you wasted it now something that you would have received easily you have to travel and go miles and distances to go and look for a man of god before he now prays for you the worst one right now is the issue of finances can i be honest with you hmm. the times that we live in right now the level of financial um, um what's the word now financial tsunami we said this thing years ago that this storm was coming the immunity is not just to do business the immunity is to learn the ways of the kingdom we kept pounding it and in a way we acted like fools we took our time to teach i taught financial dominion i taught the wealthy place i taught you know extraordinary fruitfulness different things success systems all to equip us for these days many people did not pay attention to it again i am young syndrome and one day i will face it one day i'll face it can i tell you the truth the adult today was the child yesterday the teenager today i returned to zaria and i saw some of my wonderful children i wanted to run away what in the world is going on some of them are taller than their parents now. Welcome to the reality called life. One day you will stand at the mirror and almost want to run away and say you are not the one. But life will say you are the one. Ready or not. Prepared or not. I don't want to live my life in misery and pain because of negligence to opportunities and the truth of God's word. They had the word just like we did. But the word did not profit them it is possible for the word to not profit you 
if you do not contend use this season and settle down and go for specific knowledge high level spiritual illumination in the various areas of your life where you find out that there is darkness how do you know the areas you need light by observing the reign of darkness if you find out that for this year there has been issues of darkness in your health it looks like you have been every other month you are sick don't feel bad don't feel condemned but go back and and you see the internet has has helped us and created a template healing scriptures hey, look there are people who have labored and gone through these things for you already he keepeth his bones so that none is broken confess that scripture because of the kind of drivers we have in this world now confess that scripture A thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side. None shall hurt me. With my eyes shall I see and behold the reward of the wicked. You declared the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. In the name of Jesus, the fullness of my days I fulfill. No devil anywhere will come and use enchantment to cut my life. No, I have no covenant with death. Don't wait until the day you are quarter to go. You stand and build spiritual fortification. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Don't wait until the day you hear that there is terrorism around. And that they kidnap this, they kidnap that. Then you now start scamping around and you are watching. No, no. Build yourself. Build yourself. There is nowhere you will run to that you will really find safety. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. That is the real strong tower. The righteous run it to it and they are safe. Hallelujah. Are we together? Question. If you have a bad dream, look up please believers. I hope those outside are following. Say hallelujah. If you wake up right now to a bad dream, Let's assume you go to bed and you see yourself inside a coffin. Ladies and gentlemen, what spiritual approach have you learned to deal with that situation? What are you going to do when you wake up? God forbid, you are joking. I know it's funny what I'm saying, but listen, the reality of the times that we're living in now require that you understand the specifics connected to the, the, the results that God says would be produced in your life. If you get up today, God forbid, and you find out that you probably did not get the kind of job you are looking for, show me the scripture and show me the revelation you have to protect you and immune you from poverty and a life of penury and pain. Show it to me. If you get married, God forbid, and all of a sudden you find out that your wife is unable to take in, show me what scripture you know that you have learned that you can engage. If you be, get into an office and someone vows and says, look, my grandfather is a herbalist, my father is a herbalist, me, myself, they just did my own induction, and we are in this office together, I will destroy you, and the person means it. Show, don't just say it will not happen show me many people have made blind boasts and suffered casualties ladies and gentlemen give me the basis of your confidence that you will thrive in nigeria in the midst of all the evil the sentiment and the wickedness that plagues our land parents what gives you the guarantee that your children will not be armed robbers the cane you are hanging in your house Do you know, I now know why many people get angry in the afternoon stage of their lives and they just fold the file over everything Jesus. You know why most of these are parents, lovingly speaking,
just turn away from anything God now? Because having sat in church for many years, having participated in fasting programs, prayer programs, they fallen under the anointing, they went, attended crusades. By the time they now look at their lives, 45, 50, 55, it is almost the same destiny as the person who started destroying his life as a teenager. And they now say, what then was the value of all the things that I went through? That is what I want to stop in your life. And it will not happen just by a good intention. It happens by the word. And without him was not anything made that was made. Young man, you believe you have the call of God upon your life. Oh, I'm going to go to the nations. Tell me how. One of my uncle in Canada said that uh, just when I graduate, there's one church, they've kept a space for me. Oh, how foolish. What makes you believe that you will rise and become a global voice speaking the purposes of God? Have you read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 and 2? Do you believe it? That you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. Do you believe it? Knowledge. It's time for us to take away all of the flimsy excuses that we continue to give. We need high level knowledge. High level spiritual knowledge. On the specific areas of our lives and destinies. So that we do not leave it to chance. Have you found the keys that make for a robust spiritual life? If yes, can you list them for me? What do I need to do to remain spiritual and on fire? Eh, go to church, be tithing, pray. No, you've not answered the question. See, this is what spiritual maturity is about. If you don't have answers to these questions, you, it cannot be said that you are matured. Our welfare department, I like to use examples of cooking. God has blessed our welfare department with incredible people, chefs, and you know, people who really cook very well. And every time I have the privilege of eating their food, I am amazed at the level of intention and mastery and artistry that goes into what they are doing. And they remind me of how inadequate I am as far as that providing that kind of result is concerned but do you know if i mean the reason why i may not be able to cook like them is because i'm not serious about it period do you agree with me the day i mean business and i now say i want to cook like them all of the arsenals that can help me achieve that is already there it will now be me pursuing it with intention and fire do you know the miracle about life? People can evolve to superior versions of themselves at the instance of their determination. You can start January as a prayerless person. You can start as a wordless person, but you can make up your mind. For some of you, tonight can be a time that you make up your mind and say, by December 31st, there are some things that must have happened in my life my spiritual fire the manifestation of favor i prayed for favor for one month i studied about favor for one month because i didn't want a situation where i become frustrated constrained maybe because of finances and not be able to do what god asked me to do i found out that favor was part of the ingredients required especially for the kind of ministry god was committing to me and I humbled myself to learn because I didn't know anything about it. And my goodness, when I found it, I knew I found it. If you are not finding, it's because you did not sow the seed of seeking. It is only those who seek that find. Koinonia, are we together tonight? I have brought a word from the depth of my spirit. For some of us, the way we are moving about our life believe me i do not mean to be a prophet of doom but failure and defeat is almost imminent if you do not change from the path you are taking now you are compromising on you are trivializing the need for knowledge 
and I've helped to identify one of the major reasons I am young the deception of our generation there is still time I can learn any day I'm too busy uh -uh. I was watching one old koinonia I don't know how the koinonia video came up and someone sent it and I looked at myself I wanted to scream I saw some of the faces here as matured as we thought we were you look at that photo and you want to laugh you say my goodness look at this 10 years from now we'll look at this today what we are doing and still laugh at it again when I came down from the vehicle walking here I was almost going to stand and tears would just come out of my eyes and say my God the time you are playing with now you may not have it again you have to go back get your bible shut down on this excessive loss for movies uh, social media useless things that are not profitable for your destiny and open up scripture you can decide to use the remaining october november december this october now your project can be your spiritual growth to cover for my spiritual um my spiritual stuntedness i will obtain grace to be fasting two times a week it may not be so forever but for now you put yourself in that program and you tell yourself i must pray minimum two or three hours every day it's a discipline by the time you begin to grow you are you are trying to recover to, to gain time once every week now that maybe for those if they give a little room there's some holiday or whatever it is you maximize that moment ladies and gentlemen this is what we did every opportunity god gave was not a waste it was diligently invested in the last one week how many of you have bought books almost people don't even buy books again whether e-versions or whatever it is no people are not learning there are i will not be surprised if there are believers seated here right now who don't even have bibles you ask them they say i was on my way going somewhere and my bag fell down and every other thing that you lost you bought it back except the bible it just tells you you did not place priority on it i found your word and i did eat it it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul and without him was not anything made that was made some of you here you were more on fire for god while you're on campus than you were now somewhere even fellowship maybe presidents leaders and today everything gone the lord is speaking to you tonight it is time to take your spiritual life and every other aspect of your life serious this is my simple message so we will not just come and do a miracle service no i just felt to emphasize this please hear me please hear me prayer groups ministries connected here churches go back and emphasize to your members emphasize the need to sit down and use these moments now do not let the fire on your altar go down do not allow gluttony to destroy the grace to fast and pray it's too early for that kind of thing do not allow yourself to get to a point where you are carried away and can i tell you for some of you who have begun to have open doors ministration here and there be careful there is a temptation that happens to people when they begin to go forward it is the temptation of complacency be careful the moment they invite you for one ministration oh preach here preach in this fellowship preach there chances are that the devil can tell you you have arrived why then do you need to pray again learn from jesus after a powerful crusade while it was morning he resorted to a solitary place and there prayed pray for the next level pray for the next level of grace don't compare yourself with people around and say i am better than this one i pray more than this i study more than this i have rem the bible said they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise i want to see koinonia here produce results and that's by the word
it is my greatest desire to see everyone i was speaking to my precious people the school of ministry students yesterday and i was telling them do not let anybody look down on you maybe i should use that to wrap up my brief session with you this night do not let anybody ladies and gentlemen please look at me god used my life and god used zaria to teach us and show us that if you take god seriously right from where you are he can take you to the nations are you hearing what i'm saying now this is a word of encouragement for someone don't let no devil lie to you and say there is no ceiling in your house you are staying in one house you are drinking well water so what it is not what happens around you it is the capacity that you are building within your spirit man run away from living a fake life and settle with destiny you may take gary but take it with honor you may have one shirt one trouser no problem take it with honor keep sharpening yourself and tomorrow the nations will stand and call you blessed all of those who have the call of god here seated and outside listening to me let me speak to you do not let anybody despise your grace are you hearing what i'm saying also don't be proud let me balance it because many younger ministers who are rising this cancer of pride repent from it quickly before it tears you like a wild animal oh i can prophesy i called her name i said jane she said yes sit down and, and learn scripture before the devil uses that thing to destroy you oh i was ordained a pastor now i'm a pastor or i'm a prophet or i'm an apostle sit down and learn don't let anybody despise you but also beware when God begins to expose you you can get into the temptation of arrival mentality big man you no longer can kneel before God the way he was before he found you now you are big when you stand God why will I kneel it's not the trouser I wore yesterday that I'm wearing again and God says nonsense let me show you what has happened to people who behaved like you most young people don't listen to instructions they don't do anything when the god begins to use them and begins to bless them this pride just comes in no resist it be the young man that wins learn from those who have made these mistakes don't condemn anybody but learn and tell yourself i will get it right i will use the scars and the pain of those who have gone ahead of me and where they have made mistakes they have been honest enough to show me their scars i will jump and make it right and get it right Is God speaking to someone here? Don't just come and sit down in Koinonia just when Joshua Selman is around. It's hypocrisy. You have to open up your heart to Jesus the rabbi who uses any vessel he so pleases to teach you. The day your word can come, it may not come through Joshua Selman. And if you are too big to listen to any other person, then down you go until you join many who have chosen to learn the hard way. Is God speaking to us now? We must commit ourselves in truth and take God seriously. And you must be careful. There are well-meaning, sincere people who would destroy you by giving you an advice. Take it easy. Not at this age. Not at this age. There is a level of aggression you give life. When one door closes, you force another one to open. You don't sit down and hope that things work for you is god speaking to us tonight i, I think I, I see what i'm giving tonight as just instructions it's like an admonishment it's not really a, a session it's me coming to pour my heart to tell you god is giving many of you another chance again because the way you are going about your destiny you are already messing up and if you continue in that trajectory you are going to land in trouble and god is already calling you to order to say get your life back get your life back Get your life back. Get your life back. Get your prayer life back. Get your knowledge bank back again. Go and meet Oga Jordan. Buy books. The money that you get, buy books and settle down. Get a flash. Let the media department give you these teachings. Go and settle down. They have arranged it for you already. Spiritual life, success, finances, destiny go and camp with it 
God, why am I here? I'm tired of escorting people around, not knowing where I'm going. Time is going. And whilst you stay in the middle of the night, the voice of his majesty comes. He says, right, I want to show you the blueprint of your destiny now. Everybody who found destiny and found purpose, they did not get it crossing their legs and hoping that God speaks to them. It takes desire. It takes hunger. While others are sleeping, you are awake. Speak, oh God. There are destinies upon my shoulder. Hallelujah. And you are here. In fact, I think this is, this is the best place to do an altar call now. Before Sit down, sit down. Because in this kingdom, you strike when the iron is hot. Listen, there are some of you here. While you, you are hearing me speak now, inside and outside, the Lord Jesus is telling you it's time to take him seriously. You may have been around church. You don't care. You don't send anything. So you say, can I tell you, a day will come no matter who you are. As Pharaoh, as Herod, days will come when you will not be in control of your situation. It is time to run to Jesus and mean business with him and say Lord I come with every sense of contriteness and brokenness it is time to make it right with you and there are others who are saying I just need a rededication and a renewal I think before I continue our time is gone if you belong to that category overflow one and this the main auditorium overflow two and, and overflow three and all the other overflows you can go out to the front of your screen but if you are here right now please leave your seat and run come and stand here if you are in this place now seated don't sit down and be waiting and waiting for someone to come god is calling you get up and run come to jesus that this is the beginning of my life i need to correct this and get things right right now leave your seat and come let's celebrate them as they come please take it serious this is not just the issue of coming before the altar just for a blind altar call this is this is your destiny this is the destiny of your children's children come come don't allow anybody stop you make your way and come those outside the overflows make sure you are moving to your screen overflow three all the overflows run to Jesus apostle I want to come but I am ashamed Please stand up and come. This is for your life. This is for your destiny. If you are coming, please run. Run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before Jesus. And all of us who are here, please begin to pray. Don't just look at me. Let's pray. Tonight, is, is a, it looks like a chastisement, but the Lord is bringing it out of a heart of love to help us. Before we even pray for those who are here, everyone, please pray for yourself. As you are seated right now, cry before God. It's time to move forward. It's time to make definite progress in my life and destiny. I will never be the same. Touch your grace. My life is changed. I will never be the same Touch your grace My life is changed I, 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 you are praying for yourself we'll soon pray for those who came out but cry to God for the sake of your destiny Lord enough is enough it's time for my destiny to go forward it's time to break through the limitations of culture break through the limitations of weaknesses break through the limitations of all the barriers that stand before me I am ready to go for knowledge I am ready to contend for high level spiritual illumination Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Let me make the altar call and then we'll spend five minutes to pray. We have to pray. We have to pray. I salute every one of you who is standing here. All those standing at the overflow, may the Lord bless you. Please lift your right hand if you are here in front. And those following from your screen. And you who is watching in your home or wherever, your home, your office, you are listening. I'd like you to open up your heart. Pray this prayer. You need Jesus. Now is the moment. Today is the day. Please lift your hand, those of you in front, high above your head. I want you to say this passionately. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I hand over my destiny to you. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that I am a child of God. I cut away from everything that takes me back. I go forward ever and backward never. In the name of Jesus. Now just a moment, let me pray for these dear people. Father, thank you so much for our beloved brethren, brothers and sisters who have become part of the fold by their confession. Lord Jesus, let this be the beginning of a new season for them. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave, let it be broken from your life forever. Any wrong association in your life that will not let you serve God, I cut you away from them. Let tonight be the beginning of a new season for you. In Jesus name I pray. Hold on. Please everyone hold on in Jesus name. Now, all of you who came out, those who are at the overflow and those who are here in the main auditorium, very quickly, I'd like you to follow our counselors, our officials, just for a few minutes. They'll have your details and you'll rush and come back and join us as we pray. Please wave your hands. You can follow either of the aisles here or here. Let's celebrate them as they go. Those outside, Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Please celebrate them as they go. Please politely follow the ushers as they lead you. Just follow them. They will have your details very quickly and then you will return. Follow them. They will get your details and you will return. Hallelujah. The Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and that we run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith the bible says who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and even despised the shame are you ready to pray our time is gone but in the next five minutes you are alone with your destiny i want you to cry to the god of heaven and ask him lord visit me give me access to knowledge access to knowledge high level spiritual illumination for the sake of my destiny someone is praying Shamakata bakarako tos koto pradege delegata. Pray. Grace to take my destiny serious. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I acted like a child. I understood like a child. He says, now that I am a man, I lay aside childish things. Are you praying? Hallelujah. 
you pray? Lift your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus, hear me. You are going to pray. The spirit that wastes destinies, that by the power of the blood caused that spirit over your life, the waste of the times of men, the waste of the destinies of men. Lift your hands and pray.
Hallelujah. You are going to pray. Listen to me. The grace of God represents his empowerment upon the life of an individual. It takes the grace of God to be able to do all these things that you seek to do. You are going to cry. It is always at the shout of grace, grace. You are going to cry the grace to get your prayer life back on fire. The grace to study. The grace that tears away spiritual I'd like you to lift your voice and receive grace. Lift your voice and obtain grace. Lift your voice and obtain grace. chapter 4 and verse 15 it said meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all immerse yourself in it no plan B it is the word of God no option meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them it says your profit with your profiting will appear unto all you are going to turn this scripture into a prayer the grace to plunge yourself into the subject of knowledge spiritual knowledge and i like you to declare that your profit will appear unto all lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray Meditate on this thing. Give yourself only to them that thy prophecy may have to be a In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please listen to me. Please listen. Beginning from tonight, I want you to go back with a determination that you are going to take the word of God seriously. Everyone under the sound of my voice, you should get a good USB port. The media can help you. This thing is free. Get quality teachings. Go and camp with your destiny. You should have an archive of teachings. You can get Bible on MP3. Just play it and you can even sleep and your spirit man is still hearing it while you are sleeping. This is the only way it works, my dear people. Obtain grace. 
God gave you a phone it has an alarm clock put your alarm clock 3 30 4 30 5 30 the moment it rings the moment you want to feel tired just remember the generation you are sent to saying wake up for us wake up for us wake up for us if not for yourself wake up for us and you obtain grace bow your knees and your heart before god in prayer and start your day with fire continue declaring over your destiny can i tell you this you may not have money you may not have influence but one thing you have is this treasure that cannot be taken away from you lock yourself be a people of prayer be a people of the word culture the things you say don't go around speaking as if you are not born again cursing yourself with wrong words that is how it is for all of us no no i've taught you don't be afraid and ashamed of being controversial you wake up in the morning worship is playing this is the day the lord has made i rejoice and i am glad in it i declare upon this day in the name of jesus you will bring to me the riches and the blessings that came from heaven i decree and declare my life is a blessing today i decree and declare the lands have fallen for me in pleasant places i have a goodly heritage my steps are ordered by the lord you are declaring You've stretched some time in the spirit. You are praying and you are building capacity in the spirit. Lay your hands upon the book where you write the things that relate to your destiny. Lord, I may not know how it will come to pass, but in the name of Jesus, all the men you have positioned in my destiny at their strategic timings, they will appear without missing a second lord i don't know where i'm going to be whether in lagos whether in london whether in abuja whether in zaria you are the one who knows where i'm going but i declare over my destiny my destiny i'm not the only one looking for you you look for me too two of us must meet somewhere i can't be the one looking for you alone also look for me we will meet at the point of prophecy don't get too big to engage the truth of god's word don't pray alone I wish I had time I would have shown you the balance or the imbalance of having a rich prayer life without having a strong prayer bank this is one of the things the devil is using to destroy our generation I believe in prayer you know that but many people use the prayer index as the only index to measure spiritual health so the moment you can pray for five hours standing you think you are matured go and read Mark chapter 4 Matthew chapter 4 and you will see there that Jesus went to pray for 40 days and 40 nights with fasting. And when he was done praying and fasting, you would think Satan would never come to him again because he has prayed. Satan came immediately after the prayer. The only other thing that spoke was it is written. When Satan came and tempted Jesus, Jesus did not say you are stupid. Is it that you've not seen me pray? He said it is written. The prayer was for him. It is written is the one that is for satan can i teach you this don't get into that fallacy of exalting your prayer life above and beyond your word life no it's not prayer that created the heavens and the earth is the word now you must embrace the prayer ministry but you must also be students of scripture many pentecostal charismatics are absolutely spiritually ignorant but when it has to do with prayer, give them a mic. People will pray for hours, but no results in their lives. Because the word content goes down. And because we live in a generation that has marketed prayer even above the word. People just feel the moment I can pray and I can stretch, whether I have understanding or not. And you find out those people after 5, 10 years in their utter frustration, you will never even believe that they love the Lord. Jesus prayed and fasted but he was full of that word content it would take the union of an equally robust ministry of the word and ministry of prayer go and buy your Bible if God can help you to get the Dick's anointed reference Bible get it 
and settle down and don't just read anything you want you open in the morning and it's deuteronomy 9 you just read three verses you will not grow that way that is a child's way of growing if you need to use materials to help you grow that's fine you may want to settle down and say this week i'm studying on faith or better still you can use whatever message is taught to be your study for that week so if for instance we teach on faith that becomes now you have a dual advantage whatever you learn here on friday there is still another fire from sunday abuja koinonia is not for abuja people abuja koinonia is for the koinonia family you should connect and plunge to it with all your heart and listen okay so you are learning on spiritual growth now you go back and use it as a study you're a family man you can decide to use it for your study that week with your family so that whilst the word of god comes you now extend you will see other things the preacher was saying that you did not see you can't remain small that way i'm helping you to fight a life of frustration so that after many years you would not stand and they'll say do you know koinonia you say yes ah bah, we were there check the photos you'll see my face where are the results to show godliness zero excellence in life zero influence zero fulfillment zero growth zero impact zero and you frustrate yourself to an early grave god is giving you another opportunity tonight he's brought us here again this convergence intended to shape in us go for knowledge go for knowledge in addition to prayer in addition to fasting in addition to kingdom service go for knowledge high level spiritual knowledge and every time you study and you know meditate upon it give yourself holy to it then obtain the grace to obey that's the key deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you then he begins to list them joshua 1 verse 8 the formula for success this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night in other words consistently that thou mayest observe to do observe to do observe to do not just observe to speak not just observe to learn observe to do all that is written therein it says then not before not during then shall thou make your way prosperous and thou shalt have good success he says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them father we give you praise for tonight thank you for challenging our hearts you do this because you love us you do this as a token of your commitment to our lives and our destinies lord we remain determined by the spirit we remain intentional even by the spirit to see to it that we live the fullness of our destinies based on the standard you have set for us i have brought your word to your people tonight charging their hearts and charging us all together to go for knowledge and to place premium on spiritual information lord i pray that everyone who is a hearer of this that the truth you have heard will not judge you tomorrow in the name of jesus christ that the truths that you have heard tonight will not stand against your destiny tomorrow in the name of jesus before we go can we speak in one minute over the miracle service tomorrow just declare wherever you are let's sow that seed of prayer that there will be such a manifestation of the power and the grace of god let the sick be healed let yokes be taken away let burdens be removed that god himself will transform lives afresh again pray for everyone who is coming those traveling from far and near that God will grant them very marvelous visitations by the Spirit for in Jesus name I pray TV. it's my joy to be back home I'm happy to be back home and um, it's been a week full of great activities 
been happy seeing the hand of God and the mighty things that He's doing. I want to challenge us just before we start our teaching tonight that we never get too familiar with the things that God is doing. The training of the saints, the equipping of the saints is something that we must all together submit ourselves to. Hallelujah. There is power in being built. There is power in being trained. Because as we are sharpened, as we are trained, then we become more aligned and we become more usable. It's not enough to be available, you must be usable. Being usable is a product of alignment and it's a product of training. And so I appreciate every single one of us tonight and all those who are following us online. We love you and I ask that the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. I am ever conscious of the fact that as a man of God, every time God gives you access to people, um, the primary responsibility is to be able to supply enlightenment. If as a pastor or as whatever leader, head of a church, ministry, organization, you are not actively contributing to bring in enlightenment in people, then you are wasting their time. It's a total waste of time. I don't care what else happens in that church. If at the end of every service, the people leave the way they came, no growth, no wisdom, no access to power, no enlightenment, then uh, it's a total waste of time. Total waste of time. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, we thank God for investing so much of His grace upon our lives such that every time we come, we are guaranteed that we will rise from one dimension of knowledge to the other in the name of Jesus. I'm teaching on the Dominion Mandate, part one. The Dominion Mandate. I think this is very timely and it's very important that we come into this understanding it's been a phrase that has been greatly used in the body of Christ it's been largely abused um, because it's been used without understanding praise the Lord and I'm trusting that God will grant us grace Revelation chapter 5 we'll read 2 verses 9 and 10 help us tonight Holy Spirit the dominion mandate Revelation 5 verse 9 and 10 are we there it says and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed us unto God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. We're going to read verse 10 together. Want to read? And has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. One more time. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. There are certain doctrines, please listen, just a little theological background. There are certain doctrines that are considered foundational to the understanding of any believer. When you get born again, you don't just grow haphazardly, you don't grow carelessly. It matters the doctrines that are introduced to a believer at his encounter with Christ. This will guide your growth, the efficiency of your growth or otherwise. Are we together? Not every dimension of knowledge is needed at every time. It is important that the informations that are supplied believers, especially as they grow, are strategic enough to be able to make their growth useful. It's like building, I always give this analogy, after you lay a foundation, the next thing is not a zinc. Is that true? If you put a zinc, you're going to destroy the building. You can't say you have a house. A zinc is part of the requirement, but there will be a time for zinc. So theologically speaking, there are 
excuse me, certain foundational truths. Um, and I believe that one of the reasons why believers are not very mature is because there is a haphazard communication of spiritual truths and realities. It is my considered opinion, and this is also theologically agreed, that when believers come into Christ, the first thing that they ought to know is to have a thorough understanding of what we know and believe to be the finished work of Jesus. That is the very next foundational understanding. There's no point teaching them about money. There's no point teaching them about service in the ministry. If they stumble across a service where that is being taught, then that's all right. But where you are training and building people, there is a system. So they must understand the the realities of redemption number two they must be open to the ministry of prayer any believer that gets born again must be open to the ministry of prayer that is the system with which their spiritual senses are activated if you do not give them an opportunity to be open to the ministry of prayer that activity will become very boring because they will become carnally minded are we together number three they must be open to the ministry of the Holy Spirit now technically speaking everything we deal with in the kingdom revolves around the ministry of the Holy Spirit but I mean they must be introduced consciously to the possibility of a relationship with a person called the Holy Spirit they must begin to train their spiritual senses to hear God to understand the word to interpret scripture that's the fourth thing they must be exposed to the ministry of the word the ministry of the word its power to transform their minds then several other things now become very useful when these basics are in place then when you come in with things like kingdom service when you now come in with things like the anointing when you come in with other aspects you know the deeper things of the spirit they have been able to have access to a solid foundation but the moment you get a believer born again and the next thing you are drumming them on principles of money financial reward breakthrough restoration as good as those things are they rape sorry to use that word but that is the best expression they rape that believer and put that believer in a very vulnerable position nothing that brings a sequence of growth will interest the believer again are we together now because the believer just wants to receive to sit down and learn I'm not interested or someone just gets born again and you are not exposing them to the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit it looks powerful until you watch them misuse it they will access the anointing and begin to walk in many things but lack of character will destroy it are we together now and sooner or later those people will tell you two months they will tell you they are called into ministry six months later they are already in trouble it's important that believers be guided i am persuaded that this should be the factors that should be examined even in appointing responsibilities in the body of christ paul taught us that one who is a bishop a pastor and that applies to anyone a deacon and ordained worker there should be some level of track record of staying in the house of god i'm just giving us a background this is the challenge with celebrities and the house of god celebrities those who were maybe in the world and were celebrity musicians celebrity businessmen when they come into the church they expect the same spotlight correct the same honor so you look at this guy and let's assume he was once a very worldly musician for instance are we together now and then he now gives his life to christ and in a bid to honor him you graduate him unnecessarily into realms and dimensions he has not afforded he sits down where the ministers are sitting you give him offering help and raise offering 
he stands on stage and you see him speaking Babylon you know that this guy he has not he, he has not stabilized he's just barely entering the kingdom but you appreciate it because he has been a celebrity let me tell you whoever you are when you come in the kingdom you must start and join that line you see that yes honor be given to you for your for exposing your value to be rewarded but there must be that system of building i think this is a word from god to many people already all these hilarious ordinations hilarious laying on of hands hilarious appointment of people someone gets born again in two weeks he's ordained sent somewhere we must be careful it will lead to a lot of inefficiency children leading children babes the bible called them unfruitful in the handling of the word of god and so when challenges rise up for on account of the word's sake they do not sustain the spiritual stamina because they have no track record in the spirit they have not learned honor they have not learned authority they have not learned that there are seasons in believers lives where you have to stand they have not like people like watchmani would teach they have not learned to sit they have not learned to walk they have not learned to stand one brutal attack and their whole life is finished completely everything are we blessed this kingdom is built through a system and it is important please hear me the way you build matters are we together in construction we know there are there are structures that are built by careless architects and builders and you see that structure no stability is bent anyhow a little rain and half of it everything falls down right to the louvers and there are others that are that are solid like the buildings in dubai meters high above the sky and they are they are with razor sharp precision they were built intentionally every house is built by some man but the bible says god is the builder he says and i will build my church the only thing that is built from the top is the grave never forget this that the only thing you start building from the top is the grave i just felt stirred in my spirit to put that because i want us to experience breakthrough i want us to love god and know god but there is nothing that will replace sitting down to learn sequentially to grow especially for those of us who probably got born again this year or we rededicated our lives and all of that and we thank god for the kind of grace in this house someone can be born again and in two weeks he's already on fire and people see you and say pastor and then you now enlighten yourself from that flattery and say wow that means this is speed no men cannot see the heart except it is given to them hmm? men see the outward appearance so their interpretation is based on what they are seeing ah the last time this guy held a mic in one fellowship the way he prayed in tongues and then you use the construction of the tongues to mean he has graduated in the spirit is a joke the level of stamina it takes to be trusted with people is is a dimension that only god can approve very few people know the level of spiritual stamina it takes to host an anointing and to even lead people Mata, Mata, you are worried and offended about several things but it says one thing is needful hmm? god must work on you work on you that's why you see us keep teaching let me tell you there are people in this ministry by the grace of god and with all humility i can select people at random at random and not not to be cynical most of them would qualify to be resident pastors in many circles and many denominations but they are not even leaders god is saying sit down I'm ministering to someone because you look at everybody around you this one reverend this one started his church yesterday this one this and you you are not even even an escrow in a department and you say is it that lord you are not seeing me huh 
you, are, you, are you trying to say I'm not making progress? Whoever told you appointment is proof of progress? No. If the lifespan of your commitment in the house of God is to be seen and to be appointed into offices, then it's a disaster. So you see people fight like politics. Oh, there is a vacancy. That vacancy is a deacon. And you see everybody coming to greet the pastor. Pastor, good afternoon. I just came to bless you and to let you know what is happening behind your back. I brought you covered. That's a manifesto. That's, that's, that's political party. When Jesus was going to select people that he would train, the Bible says he spent the whole night. Jesus, the fountain of wisdom, knew to appoint men to trust them with responsibilities is a serious thing. You judge by the eye and see Eliab and say, surely this is God's anointed and God said, uh-uh, that's not how I choose. Oh, look at the kind of people Jesus fasted all through the night to choose. You fast through the night and choose weaklings, thieves, fearful people. Why fast? Do you have to fast to see them? He fasted and saw what they would become, as weak as they were. They were already scribes and Pharisees. Jumping and saying, look, just restructure our mindset and that's all. We have reduced the journey. And God looked at a tax collector, wicked man. Very stupid people and said, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Saul is on his way to Damascus. And God is looking at him, what an apostle. Killing people. You see, the way God sees, ba, let me teach you something. If you don't learn this, you will make too many mistakes in your leadership and your church. There are people seated here inside and outside. Let me tell you, the dimensions they are walking in the spirit, probably even me, have not entered those dimensions. Yet they come quietly. You see them sit down. They are watching. They are learning. Reminds me of how many how students are. The real person who is taking first position is somewhere. He will write every note with the example. And the person who is second to the last. Yeah, I know that example. It came from uh, that, that uh, book. I, I know this man. I know the book he's reading. Yet he's taking second to the last at the end of the exam. But the one who is diligent will come and sit down and listen. Never promote people emotionally. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Give them a chance to have a track record with God. Don't love people too much to unnecessarily expose them to levels. And do not flatter yourself into thinking, I think I am fit for a level. Let God himself accredit you. He says, Paul, a man approved, approved. There are illegal people. The same way there are jam centers. There are authorized jam centers. Correct? There are authorized hospitals. There are authorized drugs. And every authorized drug has a registration number. We call it NAFTAC registration number. Correct? Whether the drugs are big or small. Now, there are certain people who can connive with other nations and smuggle in drugs. Put the drugs and put camels on them. Do all kinds of things. It does not make it legal. The fact that it was successfully smuggled. Those drugs in themselves may not kill, but they have not been vetted by the institute that was put called NAVDAC. That's how it is spiritually. You can get up and move and yet you have not been approved. Let me tell you, when people are approved on earth, they are assigned thrones in heaven. A throne is a symbol of authority. Those thrones are not just thrones like they are thrones that affirm anointings and mantles and graces. That's why somebody can come, no rema, no revelation, but there is a track record and a throne that backs their words. They can speak, they can stand on behalf of heaven and speak and plead your case and turn around something that has no business turning around and you wonder how are they doing it. Brothers and sisters, 
I want you to preach to yourself. I receive grace to stay until he accredits me. I receive grace to stay. Can you turn it into a prayer in one minute? I believe that is the spirit of God that just led me to communicate that I receive grace to stay. Pray. Oh, the head of department prayer is not seeing me. Are the leaders not seeing me? Is this Pastor Femi not seeing me? Worship team, are they not seeing me to give me songs? No, never lift yourself. Stay. For when the season of appearing comes, let me tell you, no mortal man can stop you. Pray. I receive grace. Shabrakato Sadabala Karyatas. Lembreketo Kasubriata Katas. Brato Sobrende Gasho Brakatosia. Pray. 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 Lord, let me be built to its finest. Let me be one of your finest battle axes on earth. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Thoroughly furnished. Not half baked. Thoroughly furnished. Unto all good works. I receive the grace to stay. I receive the grace to learn. I receive the grace to be built. It may take time, but I stay. I receive grace. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will get to our, our teaching proper, but I'm just stressing this. Oh, God is calling you to be a kingdom financier, and all of a sudden, you are killing yourself trying to wear every cloth, trying to buy every watch. Don't die for nothing. God is calling you to be a prophet and all of a sudden you are forcing yourself to see. You are not seeing anything. This thing is not trial and error. Keep walking with God. One day it will be like a joke. You will wake up one morning into a portal. A vista just opens up and says, so this is what happens. Until then you force yourself, you will see something. And what you see will destroy your life destroy others you will bring all sorts of things because you are not trained i watch people and let me tell you this is with all humility i watch people and i see them not able to hold the sword of the spirit i see the disaster that they cause with those swords it takes a skill to hold that sword the bible says with wise counsel make war it, that you have a sword does not just mean you no 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 solomon held that sword in such a way that they could know which child you have to hold it well otherwise you will kill people when you are trained by god as a leader you will know when to talk and when to keep quiet they may expect you to speak but you have been so trained full of knowledge yet silent look at moses a man who was heavily anointed yet he never prophesied he kept quiet when the spirit on him came on 70 people none of them could stand yet all of that was in one man and he had self-control see a lot of childishness that goes on in the body of christ i'm preaching to someone some of those things look like the pathways for recognition you will never this honor let me tell you is a mantle it comes from heaven with a track record you can fake it and try to gather a lot of mediocre around your life but if there is no this this ranking you see increase it is god god left it to himself plant water you can increase yourself are we together men can look at your life and know you are growing preaching there are nine things i will teach you today there are nine things that characterize the ministry of the world nine preaching or teaching what we call pulpit ministry is the eighth of the ninth eight of it are we together so the ability to preach well is only one over nine nobody gets a with one over nine there are many other aspects are we together one of the requirements is to have the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. You must 
you must there are times god exposes you to things you have no business going through it has nothing to do with you that is the price you pay for carrying the anointing for the people it is the burden of the people he puts upon your spirit you must taste of it to qualify to minister to them yes there are all kinds of people moving around and will tell you i am this and that i am apostle this i am prophet this i am that and that and your name is emeka i say yes and then the man means that because you said it correctly he is a prophet and all kinds of blunders begin to come you break people's marriages destroy people's destiny because of imbalance all sorts of things i i am a kingdom millionaire i i don't take water in a, in a sachet again i have to use bottle because i'm going far my destiny is far and we do stupid things in the name of i believe in seeing well but faith is not foolishness now let me tell you the danger here is when you look around you you will see very few people subscribing to this pattern and it can intimidate you you are human there are times you sit there and say lord but give me an opportunity to and god says you are about to derail you don't know the honor i'm bringing to your life you now want to destroy all run away from all this balloon success up today down tomorrow anointed today you crash tomorrow no god can give you consistency 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 the average ministry that is started in nigeria eight out of every ten close before the year is finished yet you see the convictions god told me i saw it so 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 our vision i saw this and that and in that vision we are going to the nations <sighs> if you do not understand what i'm teaching you tonight your life will be a track record of blunders sincere encounters that will never manifest in the earth realm till you go to be with the lord i want to save you years of pain are you ready to pray now open my eyes lift your voice and pray open my eyes open my eyes hallelujah listen to me there were two brothers in the bible born of the same father we understand called Cain and Abel two of them went to sacrifice and they thought they were doing the same thing listen every time there is no response from heaven find out why because he said if you did it rightly I have no bias for you if you did it rightly there are dimensions I have not entered as a person I don't get responses from heaven it's a sign that there is a level of alignment I need to step into because Benny Hinn will come under the same condition and there will be a response from heaven there are there are things I now do and I get responses from heaven that I did not get a response yesterday use the response from heaven to prove it's a sign you've been doing everything around your life there is no corresponding response why continue to flatter yourself i'm not doubting that you are a prophet but i'm saying sit down you carry what you call prophecy you will never go to the nations that way it cannot commit the heart of kings to you oh i'm a pastor call me pastor don't call me brother i'm not a brother i'm a pastor settle down the bible says they shall call you ministers of our god it's not a name you invent for yourself it's an inevitable product of a track record there are many of us already fighting superiors in different ministries they are not allowing men see me if you ever think that way it's a stupid thought from antichrist it's from the devil the bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel are we together i just feel we should pray one more prayer again say lord i will wait until that grace comes i will wait until i step into the fullness of the grace and the ministry lift your voice and pray lord i will pray I will wait. I am proud of where I am. My contemporaries may go ahead of me, but I'm not in a rush. I'm not in a rush. There is a making. There is a making. Lakata braka sodo bakariana balaka. Being tried as gold. Being tried as gold. The gold of offering. The finest of them. Yeah. Yeah. 
Alaska da balada, Alaska da Alaska da balada, Alaska da balada, So stop crying around and looking for invitation. Invite me. I can sing. Pastor, invite me to your church. I promise you won't be disappointed. No. No. Stay in the secret place. Let everyone go. Remain there. He will sharpen you. Mm. Sharpen you. Then when you come out, you will be like the gold of offer. The finest of it. Finest of it. No guessing. Listen. You see, I had a vision day before yesterday when Ife, the great land of Ife, and I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw certain things about my future. And I saw dimensions of grace and the anointing that made what I was working now like child's play. After that vision, I just laid down. I said, Lord, thank you. This is the exact motivation I need. Because you see, when men clap for you, you need to see something far that will make where you are walking now look like shadows i said that's right that's right it is dangerous to have a measure of result the enemy of success is the last one not failure because it can keep you i can prophesy too it's a little but at least i'm there i can minister too i lay hands out of 10 people at least somebody must be healed and you want to be given the keys of nations which somebody must be healed one out of ten is a joke that there is a dimension you enter into that you show up in a place and brothers and sisters is is like is like a charm you move and shift things around this is the bible says hearing is our father glorified when you bear much food you can bear little 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 result because the art head is blunt i look at lives today with the privilege of the grace god has given me and i'm almost crying because i wish i had this anointing years ago i saw people in situations i wanted to help them but i had not accessed the level of grace it took and i look at people now and as great as god has helped me i see dimensions where i need to reach out to people but i see that i'm still bankrupt of those dimensions what have you done that you are beginning to boast i have sons these are my sons these are my daughters where where don't let that pride kill you just because someone acknowledge you and just call you daddy or call you mommy or call you papa it's just their way of honoring your mentorship you are now carried away this is my son son stand up this is my daughter and god is watching you and say leave him there leave him there fast because this guy will be a disaster when he rises you are watched for a season then a thousand cubits is measured again and you step into another level listen this anointing you see the body that carries it must be prepared otherwise it can kill you by itself i'm not talking of demons the anointing is like a sharp knife you use it wrongly it will tear you and kill you the very owner elisha died but there was an anointing on his boat don't think the anointing is just something that comes there is mastery it's like standing on slippery ground if you don't know how business is done in deep waters you will slaughter yourself with the anointing because you see when the anointing comes you must understand things in the spirit there are certain things that god can pardon others but you won't go free because of the level of grace you have carried swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands is the key to eternal life it's a little here, a little day soon your day will come start working changing everything Hallelujah. I've had the privilege of receiving so many awards. Many of you never know. I've not announced one to you. Several awards. You will never see one on my table. I don't trust those things. 
I thank God for them, but I don't believe them. You see, if you if ten of you write a test, ah, uh, over hundred, and you get twelve over hundred, and you are the highest, you can get prize for first position. But did you pass? So you have to. You don't just say I'm the one leading this thing. How far? With respect to God's expectation. We are talking of dimensions of graces and anointings that have not been seen. We are talking of ancient portals opened up, hosting God like gods on the earth. We are talking of dimensions where miracles are worked unconsciously. Not all this jamboree and talking and tracking. We are talking of putting nations under the feet of Jesus. Stopping the sun to rise over nations until Jesus becomes Lord. Joshua did it. When you get satisfied with little results, oh, she got healed. Oh, I prayed for the woman, she got pregnant. Oh, I prayed for that dead baby, he came back to life. You have pegged yourself and you will never rise far. Am I wasting your time? If this is all we do today, can we just pray in the spirit for one or two minutes as an indication of our interest to continue? Lord, I'm not leaving your presence, not at this time. you the kind of training and the kind of weapon do you know North Korea has weapons we've not seen the potentials yet they have been building it nobody is scared of what he already understands the potentials no we've seen the bombs we've seen the ballistic missiles America has weapons that nobody in the world has seen he said thou at my battle axe my weapons of war with you i will beat down nation it didn't say you have it you are it thou at my battle axe listen as darkness looms around the horizons of our family and cities brothers and sisters it will take more than good preaching it will take more than good greek and hebrew words it will take men and women who will shut down the heavens over darkness just by entering cities not by poster all of a sudden divination cannot work why because an individual aligned enough to host that level of god prophetically you have all of god but experientially he must be formed in you bit by bit bit by bit you can define your limit in the spirit but i'm challenging someone the destiny is waiting for you cannot be changed the way you are i know you have tried 
but at the level you give prophecy no nation will be blessed your prophecy has not left individuals to nations there is still room for building this is a, a shake up and a wake up there are still people in our families as anointed as we are darkness is still looming around them that's a sign that you are not refined enough are we together you are doing well as a pastor but you know there is still witchcraft in your family you even acknowledge it so what is wrong with that light there is a way that light can be so bright you will catch a revelation that will make you travel home you will say i'm here just for one day shut the door everybody shut the door i found something no shut the door you shut the door and in two hours people drive to your house saying i'm sorry it's me that tied everybody down it's, it's not my fault and in the whole, whole dawn, I, I i will you crush the gates of hell into pieces listen when john g lake was alive he made spokane the healthiest city in the whole world are we together ew kenyon no man died less than 70 within his environment where have we gone to that we are making so much noise shouting shouting all sorts i am this i have sons five sons international ministry i went to ghana i went to london sit down it's a call one quality of champions is they are never satisfied with where they are others are clapping for you if you join them to clap for yourself you are not wise let them do the clapping while you do the moving you continue to move lord i thank you for this dimension and this grace but then open more frontiers open more frontiers and all of a sudden a time will come they will say you are zeus or hermes they say this person pastor alpha is not a normal human being again what dimension is this what level of grace and unction is this i look at my life today people send me text messages all the time appreciating the grace of god and this is what most of them say thank you for paying the price whenever i get those things they really touch me do you know why because they make me know that if i continue see if you want to host this grace you better find a way of letting pain know that you are not giving up because of it this pain factor that has robbed us this pain factor this pain factor is too painful the training is too much you will never 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 enter the anointing that way pray in the night you are complaining one hour you are grumbling forget about power god is not a herbalist forget about power 30 minutes of praying in the spirit and you are talking no you can't carry power that way it takes a level of stamina 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 that defies the gates of darkness you must defy pain you must defy excessive food this eating like a fool that destroys people you are on a mission going somewhere if you cannot tame your stomach you can't tame any demon eat anything anyhow i'm a human being man must work look at that kind of thinking sleep if you don't conquer sleep you will never host this anointing no. this slumber and sluggishness and laziness you stand to pray 10 minutes you are snoring and sleeping you can just and gossip for one day but to stand to do spiritual things and then the time for the word of god you open this bible you are yawning you better cast that devil it's a spirit you open the bible you are yawning cast it fast your life is under attack don't ever say it's all right i'm just tired listen men are not anointed by luck there is a price i'm i'm showing you a bit of my private life a bit of the price you see that that's the reason why when people go through this you talk about them even in the secret god punishes you in the open they have they have established an altar through the blood that comes out of them 
blood is a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Something came on me for you today. Please let's not play games with this thing. If you are in it, go for it. Go for it. Fast for it. Pray for it. Study for it. Sit down for it. Sit down for it. Don't rush anything. I assure you, one step in his approval will cover the grounds of 20 years. There's nothing called wasted time with him. Please sit down. You need to advise yourself tonight. Myself, sit down. Myself, sit down. Myself, sit down. Myself, sit down. Ah, you are Papa. Thank God. Myself, sit down. You are Mama. You are deaconess. You are prophetess. You are apostle. You are this. Myself, sit down. Then you will command levels of power. And you will stand and watch what God is doing to you. And you will say, my God, what is this? Please be seated in Jesus' name. If I had my way, we would just pray till the service is finished. Because when the water is, the Bible says you strike while the iron is hot. As it's hot like this, you strike it. Let everything that is not God fly out of that, that, that making. Let's touch on something tonight. But this message is really a message that struck hard. I believe there are specific people this word is for. God is asking you to wake up and Eli is asking you to go back to sleep. You have to choose who to believe. At your level you are anointed too much you know people send me all kinds of texts an apostle of uncommon grace and power i thank god for it but i just look at the text and i laugh do you know what uncommon grace and power is all these programs listen let me give you a frank advice Program, one program here, one event here, one crusade here, one conference here. You won't grow that well. A, a conference is not kind. You won't grow that way. Many of us are obsessed, passionate. You have a church of two members. There are ten crusades, ten conferences in one year. What are you doing? Be honest with yourself. Nobody grows that way. You sit down and you are sharpened and fired. You know how a razor blade is? When you buy a new razor blade, you touch it on a paper. That's how it goes. That's what God is saying. You see God lifting all these our people now. Worship team. Gradually, gradually. When, not, when they all come to me, I tell them, go and sit down. Because... I'm the one supervising the sharpening by the spirit. You can feel sharp because you cut wood. But what you are going to be cutting are metals. Not woods. Metals. Metals. There are machines that ride through metals. There are machines that cut stones. Do you know the, the, the strength of those materials? You cut through those. Brah, just cut everything. There are others where you subject them through certain kinds of woods. They will hook and the machine will stop turning. That's nonsense and inferior product. It's a sign that that was not a good product. But when you buy it, you buy something, it will cut through rocks and pieces them. That's what God is telling you. By the time you stand, in all the millions you are looking for, you will be so valuable. Oh, at my age, I think I should have built a house. Don't worry. Just stay. Somebody will bring a car key, bring a house key, bring all kinds of things and give you. Be careful. Unhealthy comparison will destroy you. We live in a world that is very carnal. I teach you success principles. We just finished success systems. But be careful. 
unhealthy comparison at my age i am 40 at my age i'm supposed to have five cars and three bungalows okay sorry you don't have it now so what are you going to do about it i, I don't know but god must answer me in this season and the entire circumference of your pursuit is cars and houses you are in trouble over. you are in trouble you are in big trouble learn to know when your life is under attack it's not when you see a spirit appearing there are things around your life that are pointers immediately there are suggestions suggestions that come to your spirit nonsense suggestions unhealthy comparison look at that other pastor he's not as anointed as me that's an attack cast it immediately hallelujah the dominion mandate let's see how far god will help us in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 we're looking at part one in genesis chapter 1 verse 26 man as we know theologically speaking is the apex of god's creation and when god i think uh, media just take this part of this teaching and make a podcast out of it huh this this fiery how many minutes we spent make a podcast out of it just carry it like a little tool of revival keep it in your phone whenever you sense you are backsliding just use it plug it and sleep while you are sleeping you will see me yeah it's not pride i will help you and stamp every nonsense yes God doesn't show people people's faces just because they are anointed. It's a mystery. I've said it. Many people will think it's witchcraft. If you see me in your dream, wake up and rejoice. Something serious happened to you. Hallelujah. You must have the arsenals. When you are discouraged, what do you have in your spiritual arsenal? Is there a message? Is there a tool? I tell you, woe to that person who has not programmed. You don't prepare for battle at the war front. You station them. There are tools. Whenever I feel that I'm losing spiritual favor, there are tools already. There are tools. There are tools. There are tools. God gave me tools. Tools. Whenever you feel you are lazy, that fasting grace is not there. I tell you one correct message listen to it in the night where all the noise has gone off the light sit down quiet and you finish that thing you start the fasting the next day i tell you i tell you and your stomach cries you say you are joking not based on not based on what i had you found out you are not reading books again you keep buying them but you don't read so people keep seeing them and think you are reading them and then one day you listen to one message the word is always god's bailout system if you exempt yourself from the word you're already in trouble there should be a word for seasons in your life there are times honestly you are discouraged you need a word that lifts you everybody will not have your time you must learn to have your own time get the word and sit down hear messages that build you and all of a sudden your faith rises Hallelujah. God, I feel like praying. Oh, this thing is on me. I feel like praying. I wish I were alone. I feel like praying. Let me tell you how what to do. Whenever your spirit is stirred, don't go to bed. Pray immediately. Make sure you can sleep praying, but don't waste it. There are times this kind of things happen to you alone. You are listening to a message. Every time every time because the moment you feel it is like a spiritual feeling station something is happening prayer is like opening the tank you see that you open the tank oh god feel me let that anointing come let that fire come and then it comes upon your spirit these are simple spiritual techniques that keep people strong some of you after hearing this now you now relax back to carnality you see that carnality doesn't mean something evil you just come down to the this is what it means to be in the spirit your spirit is alive 
ready to receive like a womb like a woman's womb ready to receive seed see that everything that comes from heaven bam, like a woman takes in you take in something and immediately and the realm of the spirit doesn't work with nine months you can take in immediately and certain things happen and you will birth it out immediately hallelujah the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet Genesis 1 verse 26 and God said let us make man in number one our image everybody say image number two after our likeness and then he says let them always oh, projected have dominion please stop the bible says let us make man in two using two dimensions the first is our image now until adam we know that already that they were already inhabitants upon the earth right other dispensations carried different kinds and types of humanoid species adam is not the first man are we together the first man who opened up our dispensation but there have been other humanoid species again and again upon the earth are we together now who had bodies bodies that were spiritual bodies that were not mortal bodies that were made out of different substances there were dispensations where the men that lived in those dispensations had bodies that were made of light quantized light there were dispensations where men had bodies that were